Welcome to this episode of The Straight Path. I'm your host, Firuz Abdul Rahman. I'm sure you're going to find today's topic very interesting, inshallah. We're going to talk about the behavior of Muslims, inshallah. We're going to talk about how Muslims should interact with the society around them. Mashallah, people have good behavior, but some of them out there have bad behavior too. And I've got a lot of guests with me here today, inshallah, to discuss the topic. Before I introduce them, here are some thoughts about what a Muslim's character should be in the society they live in. Now my world is bright. Islam is my sight. Being Muslim in my area. Being a Muslim minority is not an easy thing. However, there are many Muslims around the world who are successfully practicing the deen among people who have a very different world view. One of the most difficult challenges is to live among people who consider you to be an enemy. And because of media propaganda and the bad example of some Muslims, this is unfortunately the case in quite a few places around the world. It is not easy to be stared at or treated with hostility especially when you know that you are definitely not an enemy to the people around you, but that you have their best interests at heart and wish to be a source of goodness, peace and humanity among them. What better way to turn the tide of public misconceptions about Islam and Muslims than by putting into practice the teachings of the Prophet, peace be upon him. If we can do that, we will enrich the place where we live with all the good qualities that are respected by mankind. What would be the impact on our communities if all the Muslims were honest, hardworking, punctual, devoted and kind to family? It is part of human nature that people love those who are kind to them, wish them well and do not seek to harm them. If we look closely at the Muslims who have successfully become part of the social fabric of their community, we may well find that they are good neighbors, hardworking, actively participating in community projects, and generally working towards making the place where they live a better place to be. Now my world is Islam is my sight. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that little clip. Uh, we've got a lot of guests with us here today to discuss this topic about Muslim behavior, as we've said before. But before we get into that, I'd like to remind you about our history on the straight path. We've spoken about quite a number of issues, but what we're focusing on really is about people coming into Islam. We've spoken about how to take that first step to come into Islam, whether you're a non-Muslim or whether you're a Muslim who doesn't practice. We've spoken about the challenges that people face. We've spoken about if you're young, if you're from the youth, what challenges you would face. But we've spoken about marriage, we've spoken about the community, and today's topic is about behavior in general and the Muslim characteristic. Um, I'm sure you're uh, dying to hear from our guests. We've got a few of them here today with us. I'll start with my right, I'll start with Brother Abdullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Tell us a little bit about yourself, brother. My name is Abdullah Dani. I was born in New York. I'm originally from Puerto Rico. I accepted Islam uh, eight years ago, and I'm currently studying in an institute of Azhar. MashaAllah. How do you find study at Azhar? It's great that I have gotten a good opportunity to be able to begin the different sciences dealing with Islam and Quran and being able to understand the Quran is a great opportunity. MashaAllah. Jazakallah khair for coming in today. Brother Ismail, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as How are you? I'm your brother in Islam, Ismail, born and bred in England, originally from Nigeria. Huh. I've been practicing now for about, alhamdulillah, about over 10 years now, alhamdulillah. I'm here in Egypt currently, inshallah, studying Islamic studies and Arabic, inshallah. Masha, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Jazakallah khair for coming on today. 
I'm Brother Asim, Salaam Alaikum Rahmatullah. Alaikum Salaam Rahmatullah. How are you today? Alhamdulillah, not too bad. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, my name is uh, Asim Abu Jamal. I'm from South London, England, uh, born and raised there. Originally, uh, my parents are from Jamaica, Kingston. Um, I'm here in Cairo with my family, uh, doing a bit of studying, uh, inshallah. So, uh, Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. And how do you like it here? Uh, MashaAllah, it's very nice. Uh, you know, Muslim country, you know, it's. Uh, it's very good, very beneficial for me. MashaAllah. May Allah continue for it to be beneficial for you. Jazakallah Abdurrahman, salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi My name is Abdurrahman. I'm from America. I've been Muslim for almost four years. I'm currently studying here in Cairo. And uh, I think this is a great topic as when before Islam and then after Islam, there, I never really had the conversation about Muslim character. But looking back, I can see that Islam has uh, quite an impact on one's character. MashaAllah. Uh, about character, we're going to uh, focus around four different issues, inshallah. We're going to talk about what the brothers who are present here, what their character was like before they became Muslim, and what they found generally to be the characters in the societies they lived in. Also, when they started researching into Islam and when they came into Islam, what the theory about Muslim character was. Also about once they accepted Islam and once they've seen people come into Islam, how character changes. We're also going to talk about role models out there. Role models is normally uh, a positive thing, but sometimes you find people out there who, are, who don't have very good character. Inshallah, we'll touch on that too. So without further ado, let me ask you, brother, uh, the characteristics of a person before Islam, yourself in particular, how would you describe it? No direction. Maybe the bad character is the one that gets the, more, the most uh, popularity and the worse you are, the more popular you are, yeah. you know, the worse you are, the more, most liked you are in schools and that's why some people that are not bad try to show they're bad just to be acceptable, try to speak bad, you know, just to sound cool and, and also be acceptable in the, in the settings that they, that they are. You know, so basically, as myself, usually learning the new slangs and using foul languages and cursing, you know, out loud, just, that was basically it. as as a youth, you know, as a youth, mm -hmm. just trying to basically fit in, fit in the society. Because if not, usually those that don't fit in are usually picked on, even if it's in high school, for the four years of high school. <laughs> They're picked yeah. on and they're labeled, you know, mm. with, with different names, so. Where did you fall in? Were you one of the people that harassed people or were you harassed? <laughs> no, I, like. <laughs> Horrible. I, I was. Because I, I, I was one of those that was harassed or no. I associated intentionally with the people that were harassed. No. Uh -huh. so, the underdog. But, no, but. Uh, okay, I was. Because uh, here we are sitting, I mean. <laughs> yeah, it, okay, so now. I'm in the spotlight now. <laughs> I'm not. It's good. I'm not in the courthouse. Okay, I can say everything as it is. <laughs> you know, in Islam, everything is clear. You know, mm. I personally always challenged like bigger people than me, so I always try to make sure that that I fit in. It wasn't easy because as when I was young, I was being picked on by bigger people. So when I entered high school, I didn't want to begin like that. So I try to like. Make sure that if somebody try to, from an upper grade, try to like bother me, I will make sure that that will stop right away. But when I saw others being picked on, I also try to stop it. You know, like even if it's in class or even by a teacher, sure. even by a teacher. So that that's the kind of character I had. You know, but sometimes when there were others that were trying to be bully, then I would bully them. You know, like make them feel low when they're in a crowd, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, because some, they, they pick on others, but they're really, they're really uh, not that way. You know, mm -hmm. like they just say, okay, I want to be, like there was one, one friend of mine, <laughs> I know him, he tried to be like Tupac. Mm -hmm. So he would walk like Tupac and he would, you know, use the radio and the bandana like, like Tupac. Mm -hmm. And he used to pick on somebody. But when we were by ourselves, he will be always like afraid and, mm. and, and kissing up and <laughs> <laughs> so he wasn't really like you know like so one time there was one one guy that that w that was picked on 
and I, and I brought him and I said, now you're going to fight him. <laughs> and he was like, if you don't fight him, I'm going to fight you. <laughs> <laughs> so it, so they, they didn't fight that, but mm. China, this is the thing, I, I would tell others like, you know, don't give in, you know, mm. like stand up for your rights and, and that's it, you know, mm. you know, be, be strong. You're a human being, he's a human being. Mm. That's mm. it. There, there's no disadvantage here. Mm. Mm. So that was basically, you know, yeah, I did bad things with using foul language and, and all this, but this was normal. It was mm. like nothing it's strange. Normal, especially in our society, very normal. And we're going to come back and shall and hear what the brothers have to say just after this short break. Islam is my side. misinterpreted, misconstrued, and misjudged. Let's wake up from delusion and step into the world of reality with confidence. Find all the answers to confront or defy, reject or accept, dispute or challenge when caught in crossfire. crossfire. Misconceptions clarified, falsehood exposed, and truth revealed. Discover the reality with Dr. Zakir Naik in Crossfire every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 10 a.m. India on Peace TV. of glories. Often that three, that three, that three. Fought the pangs of poverty by selling gowns at thirteen, at thirteen. His blindness did not stop his unquenchable thirst for knowledge. Propagated virtues prevented vice with decisions unchallenged. He is Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Abdullah bin Baz, former Grand Mufti of Saudi. Every action depends upon its intention. Intention sincere. What is your intention? Why do you do what you do? Concentration, focus, dedication, dynamic. Every single aspect of your mind, of your soul, of your heart. Is it for Allah, sincerely for Him? Or is it for something or else? Is it for something else? Get going on how to improve your prayers. The purpose of these talks is to counter exactly that type of behavior. Join Abdul Rahim Green. In other words, with the outward action, there is also an inner dimension. An inner dimension. In Inner Dimensions of Worship, next on Peace TV. Is my side. alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the straight path. Brother Ismail, salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa So without further ado, let me ask you, brother, uh, the characteristics of a person before Islam, yourself in particular. When you're not practicing, you're not a Muslim, your character tends to be the opposite of what Islam wants in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. For example, you're enjoying the good or forbid the evil as a Muslim. But prior to becoming a Muslim, it's that you forbid the good and enjoy the evil because it's deemed by societies to be something good. Mm. You know, like Allah says in the Quran that whoever abstains from the Quran, I mean Islamic life, he has a miserable life. So your character prior to Islam was a miserable character, a very bad character. However, me, myself personally, I had certain characters 
And all of us, I'm sure, has certain characters, like he was saying, he stops people from being bullied, that were, in the essence, very good. Mm. Because of society we lived in, he made it bad. For example, he stopped people picking on people. Whether he did it in the right way or the wrong way, but I tend to guide the find the person. <laughs> <laughs> it's another thing. So my, like myself, my character, you know, prior to Islam, I was a very social person. Mm -hmm. And I was always into the issue of unity. But because there was nothing to guide it, it affected my character in a negative way. Mm. So I was into socialising, whether it was a good company or bad company. I was into unity. So initially it started with the unity of all mankind. <laughs> you know, black, white, everybody. Uh -huh. So I was a very social person. I had white friends, black friends. And then because it wasn't moulded by anything or principle, I mixed with all sorts. And then later on it became into a black nationalistic thing that, you know, mm. I'm into the black thing. And then when you get into the black thing, you realise there's Jamaicans, there's Caribbeans, there's <laughs> Bajans, there's Nigerians, there's so Guineans. Wow. It's too much. So then you went to the, I'm into Africa thing, back to the Africa. So myself, I was more into a unity thing in Jahiliya. You know, I was into, <clears throat> I was a very social person, you mm -hmm. know, like that. And generally, the people around you? The people around me? Mm -hmm. I could say generally the people that are not Muslims, they didn't have very good character looking back on it now. Not mm -hmm. very good character. And even the goods that had they had in them was not molded by Islam, you know, but generally the character wasn't good. What about yourself? <laughs> yeah, I mean you know, you know, generally the same kind of thing, like, you know, um at school, you know, uh very mischievous, you know, getting into trouble, trying to be popular, you know, making everyone laugh and everyone follow you, you know what I'm saying? And uh, that kind of stuff, you know. But, um, you know, obviously you're young. As you grow up, you know, you get into more serious things, you know. You know, drugs, drink, you know, crime, and all kinds of stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, even, even, though, even though you have this bad aspect about yourself, there is a good side to you as well, in the sense where you, you know, you, me personally, I always wanted to help people, very sociable person, you know, always in the mix. As my mum would say, if, <laughs> if I'm in the egg, I'm in the yolk, you know what I mean? I'm in the <laughs> middle of everything, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, very much like that, you know, as, mm -hmm. as, as a young man growing up. But, um, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, Islam has come and alhamdulillah, you know, it's just, just basically just changed me totally, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, that's it, alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. I was just lost. I mean, I'm sure we all look back and say we're lost. But for me, uh, I mean, growing up, I look back at high school and or even what these brothers are saying mm -hmm. here. It seems everybody has something that they're following. Mm -hmm. There's something that you believe in. That's, that's how true. you order your life. Yeah. For me, growing up, you were supposed to, uh, well, in high school, you're supposed to play football. American football, not what we call soccer, American football. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to drink and you're supposed to have girls, you're supposed to do all this. I, I rejected this, left this very early. Even though like the coach wanted me to play uh, football and basketball. And I left it because I couldn't take the way the people behaved. So I just kind of, I never really had any structure in life. So I didn't have like a goal or I didn't have like a model. So, or a role model I should say or some type of, like a team, you know, football, you join the football team, that becomes your life for like four months of the year, or like half the year, and then you lift weights, you do all this stuff, and you develop your own culture. I pretty much hung out with more or less the people that were picked on and, um, you know, just kept to myself. So when I look back at my character, I would say I was, yeah, there's a lot of, I was really kind of looking for something, but I didn't know. I, so to develop my character, I was sort of at a loss. Mm -hmm. I would say I was more at the receiving end of things, mm -hmm. allowing things to form me rather than being proactive, I guess, I would mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. So you kind of lose your self-confidence in such a situation. No. Mm -hmm. Because you're, you're supposed to, like in high school, you're supposed to, okay, there's the culture for, like we didn't really have crime so much, but there's a culture for going to beer parties. And that's a very big thing, very mm -hmm. big thing. A uh, very important thing, I'm sorry, and then there's basketball, there's football, and these are very different cultures, there's baseball. So then if you play football, then that means you're going to have certain girls that follow you. You play basketball, so if you leave all of these things, where are you? Mm -hmm. There's nothing for you in high school then, at mm -hmm. least from where I was from. And Brother Abdurrahman, you were saying about how, what your thoughts were and... Yeah, I mean, before Islam, growing up, I mean, there weren't any Muslims in my neighborhood, or in my, uh, I should say, in my whole county, and which is quite 
you know, maybe 100 square miles. I mean, it was huge, a huge area. There's just no Muslims. So growing up, I didn't really feel like, I didn't feel like I fit in, and I didn't fit in. And so I associated with, also with people that didn't fit in. So I, I tended to have very few friends because the outcasts aren't necessarily united either. So I didn't really have, I didn't really have like um, an alternative. So I just thought, man, there's something really, I messed up. You know, I can't do what they're doing. I can't enjoy myself like they're doing. So when I was going into college, I was just lost. So I was like, the army is going to solve my problems. <laughs> so, and I never, I never really saw, like, for instance, going to a, a party or something and then seeing a Muslim and a, you know, somebody who's clearly Muslim and a thobe or something walking and doing something to show me, like, okay, what I'm doing is wrong, there's an alternative. I never had somebody clearly show there's an alternative, even when I was in college, until, uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destined for me to meet a, a, a Muslim after having gone on, on a night on the town, and I met him, and slowly but surely. But I, I can't say, like, I saw some people doing something different. This is all that I knew even when I <clears throat> went in college. In college, it just intensified. If you hadn't drank in high school, you were going to drink in college. Yeah. If you hadn't done drugs in high school, you were going to do drugs in college. And if you had already mm -hmm. done that in high school, you were going to do it more. So, mm. you know, it's just like you go from one end to the other. People who are really um, held up as role models, they may be doing community service and all this stuff, but at the same time, they're having illicit relationships. At the same time, they're drinking, they're doing drugs, they're doing all these things. So all the things that I was brought up with as a child, you know, elementary school, were shattered. There's, there's no reality. This mm. is not reality at all. Mm. That's true. What, uh, how was the, the character of that, of that individual, of that Muslim that you met? SubhanAllah, he must have been patient because I was drunk at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I took him as a friend, and I, could, and I, and I, I talked to him. And... Um, I just remember talking about him, about just the simplest things. How is one supposed to be with his parents, with one's parents? He told me. How is one supposed to be with their, with their brothers or sisters, blood brothers or sisters? How is one supposed to be with their wife? There's such these things. And then uh, the idea of like justice, like you had a strong sense of justice. I, I felt that I had it too. I didn't know how to express it. And uh, a sympathy for the weak and the suffering, the oppressed people. These were the things that we talked about. And um, I guess looking back when I saw two sisters, they're Muslim sisters, alhamdulillah, and they were, they were covering themselves as, and they were wearing hijab. And I remember that's actually probably really what maybe made, made me think, you know, what is it that makes them to do this mm -hmm. when everybody is doing the complete opposite? It's summer, mm -hmm. sure. you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's maybe what maybe caused me to step back a little bit. Mm. What about when you start looking into Islam, or even if you weren't really looking into Islam, what was your idea, your thoughts about what a Muslim is supposed to be like? I mean, my biggest thought personally, because like, uh, I think a lot of us, due to the kind of society we grew up, the racism, mm. the segregation in society, a lot of us, especially in the school I went to, is predominantly black, went into the black nationalism kind of thing. Mm. But then, Within our school were some white people that are very good. So this confused me. How could it be that only the good people are black people? There's some good white people out there. There's some good Asian people. So now I became confused. So looking into Islam, one of the things that I thought when I looked into Islam was something that could unify all mankind. So I remember the part that touched me personally, a lot of people, is when we went for the pilgrimage, Hajj. People of all races, all colors, all nations go around the house of Allah praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sitting together, eating together, something you'll never get like that in a normal situation. And it made me wonder, what brought these people together? You know, prior to, you know, becoming, you know, practicing Islam, I thought, mashallah, you know, this is what I'm going to find in Islam, this union mm -hmm. based on goodness. Mm -hmm. Not just based on the, fa you know, fact of fitting in for the sake of fitting in. Because mm -hmm. like he said, you know, prior to practicing Islam, you just fit in, no matter what it is, yeah. you must fit in. Whatever society dictates, even within you, you know this thing is wrong, but you think, I just have to fit in. But this, this fitting in was all based on goodness, you know? So this is the thing I was looking for that I thought I will find in Islam, this unity based on goodness. Mm. It's really powerful because mm. before, like, the society pressures you, tells you what to do. You can't stand up against the society. You, what's, what, what, what are you measuring society by? What you've been told. But in Islam, you are told and it's unchangeable from now until the Day of Judgment. Mm. So when you are told to do something, you measure it by what, what's, what's been revealed to uh, mankind. Mm. And this is like so empowering. It is. Mm. So you can uncover, you know, like when you go through the challenges of 
seeing the reality of the Muslims, and it's difficult. You have to always look back to this. You ha that's what I found myself, mm -hmm. is to look back at to the Qur'an. But you need to see how the Qur'an was lived, so you look to the Prophet, peace, uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then you look to his companions and his successors, and you have all that you need. You have a wealth you will never be able to it's realize. No. Mm -hmm. And through this, you, it's, it's empowerment. You look to yourself, you look around you, and you can see change. You're no mm. longer just being acted upon, but you want to try to change it for the better. Mm -hmm. And you're told the proper ways of doing it. Yes, yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Because even for me, like, when I was exposed to Islam, it was like when I took my shahad, it was less like, you know, I had blinkers on and like, or a veil, and the veil was just moved. Okay. And it's like I just saw everything for what it was. Like, you know, it, it, was, it was so deep and meaningful for me. Um, you know, it was, uh, I, I can't even put it into words. You know, it makes life a lot simpler. It makes life a lot mm. simpler. It mm. makes you see things the way it should be seen, That's you true. know, and not with any kind of confusion. Um, but alhamdulillah for Islam, that's all I can say really. I mean, I was confused, like he was saying, like, you have so many dictates from society, you don't know which one to follow. But the one that dictates these things to you, that you unite upon, is only one Lord. But prior to Islam, you got dictates of rap culture. Mm -hmm. So you get into the rap culture, then you've right. got, you know, reggae culture, you got soul culture. And a lot of these things are enjoying upon evil. you got sports, you got so many things you're trying That's to right. follow all at once, so yeah. many lords you're trying to please. And at the same time, it makes you confused, because even though you're into black nationalism, you get the yeah. rap stars, for example, talking about black nationalism. And then the next track, he's talking about he killed this guy, he said this, this, to this person, did that to that person. Yeah. Well, then you go into the ragga culture, for, okay, this is more to the root. You know, and in the middle of talking about how he slaughtered so many people, goes Lord of Mercy, you know, in the middle of the track. <laughs> so when I, you know, like the brother saying, Alhamdulillah, it's like a veil just lift, you know, lifted from your eyes totally. Yeah. You know, and the change is amazing. And people notice this change in you. That's you know? right. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Yeah. Until we see you next time, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.